North Korea reportedly continues to reject foreign aid workers entering the regime, yet it's welcoming back Russian foreign a tourist. What's on the North's mind? We turn to Yako Zeslut for more. Welcome back. Hello, thank you for having me on the show. Thanks for joining us. So, citing multiple international organizations, NK News reported last week that the North continues to keep its doors closed to foreign aid workers. Isn't pandemic no longer a concern for the North? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, I think it's pretty clear that the pandemic is no longer an issue for the government of North Korea. And we can see that because uh, North Korean citizens are now being recalled home for the first time in years. Uh, and diplomats from Russia, China and Mongolia are being welcomed into North Korea without going through a lengthy quarantine process. Uh, and of course, there are these uh, uh, Russian ski tourists that I mentioned. So as to when aid workers will go in, yesterday I interviewed a former senior officials from the United Nations for the NK News podcast and I asked him this exact question, when will aid workers and other um, humanitarian folks be allowed back in? And he said he believes it'll be soon, uh, but he couldn't specify exactly when. Yeah, like you mentioned, at the same time, Russian tourists are allowed to travel to the regime. I mean, what does this mean then? Yes, it's a good question, and uh, uh, it's certainly not what we expected, but uh, I think the general consensus is that uh, it's a way of North Korea practicing uh, a, a favorable diplomacy, uh, or sorry, a diplomacy of favoritism uh, with those friends and allies that are closest to it. So by letting Russians in, uh, the government of Pyongyang is showing that it is uh, in support of Russia and that it needs friendship and support from Russia in return. So you're saying North Korea is playing this diplomacy of favoritism. I also would like to point out how North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has a secret son, reportedly, who is kept out of the public eye because he's apparently too pale and thin. This is according to the Daily Mail. Now, how realistic a statement? What do you think, Yako? Yeah, well, some context here. So the source for that Daily Mail article is uh, Che Su Yong, who is uh, the same former NIS official who uh, said back in November last year that uh, everyone has been using the wrong name for Kim Jong Un's daughter and that it's actually not Kim Ju Ae but Kim Eun Ju. Mm. Uh, now that case still has not been proven, and there's been some pushback against that, such that, for example, it doesn't make sense if people in North Korea with the name Ju Ae have been forced to change their name. Why would that name be the wrong one? Uh, and other arguments. So it, now, of course, it is quite possible that Kim Jong Un has other children, uh, but we haven't seen them. So if they do exist they're being kept out of the public eye for some reason. Uh, and if that boy that uh, Che Su Young said exists and is being held because he's too thin and pale, well, look, that might be true, but the media has to be careful uh, of single source reporting. Uh, we've got these two stories, they're all based on the same source. I would advise caution and we have to wait until we get some more sources. For example, if there was a defector who came out from North Korea who had been close to the center of power, who had seen the boy and knew something about it, that might be more uh, information. But we'll just have to wait and see. Right. I mean, does that mean, though, the possibility of the son becoming the successor cannot be ruled out instead of the daughter, Chue or Unju? We certainly cannot rule anything out. Again, don't forget, we didn't know that Kim Jong-un was going to be the next leader of North Korea until his father, the late Kim Jong-il, said so in September 2010. Mm. And that was years after South Korean media had been reporting the existence of three sons. So it certainly is possible. However, that being said, if there are multiple children, but only one of them is in the spotlight with her father, attending official functions, uh, attending rocket launches and events like that, uh, then that one probably is in the spotlight for a reason. She enjoys a special status. Maybe she has been selected by her father. But of course, plans can always change, can't they? Uh, in 10 years time, Kim Jong-un might feel differently. He might anoint a different child as his successor. So uh, don't forget that there was a time in North Korea when people thought that Kim Il-sung's brother might succeed him, but that didn't happen. And then people looked at Kim Jong-il's brother as a potential successor for him, and that also didn't happen. So we have to just watch and keep our minds open. Right, it's never been easy to read uh, what's on the North's mind. Now, the North's state-run newspaper, Dodong Shimun, hasn't reported on Cuba since February 15th. That's the day after South Korea unveiled a surprise announcement of for, uh, forging four more diplomatic ties with Cuba. Isn't this rare for the North and not to mention Cuba? 
It's, it's not rare that North Korea doesn't make a big public deal out of uh, diplomatic disappointments. I can only speculate, but I would not be surprised if Pyongyang is disappointed that Cuba has normalized relations with Seoul. But also North Korea, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of experience with this. Way back in, I think, 1989 or 1990, when Hungary was the first nation in the Soviet bloc to, uh, to publicly normalize relations with South Korea, North Korea was furious and some very angry words were said. And now Hungary and North Korea have normalize their relations once again. So I think after 30 years of this kind of experience, North Korea is quite pragmatic and used to the idea that not only countries, but also the United Nations can recognize and have relations with both Koreas at the same time. Uh, and Cuba is also pragmatic because don't forget that right after the normalization of relations with South Korea, Cuba's president Miguel Diaz-Canel tweeted to affirm the historic relations on and friendship and solidarity between Cuba and North Korea mm -hmm. on the occasion of Kim Jong-il's 82nd birthday. So uh, Cuba is certainly not finished in its relations with North Korea either. Definitely. All right. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, Yako. We appreciate it. You have a great day. Thank you very much. You too.